Heat. Excessive heat is a threat to any power transformer. It reduces the useful life of transformer oil and speeds up the deterioration of the transformer's winding insulation. If uncontrolled, heat can significantly shorten the life expectancy of a power transformer. Part of the system for monitoring and controlling the temperature of a power transformer is transformer temperature indicators. In this program, we'll look at power transformer temperature indicators, their components, and how they work and how they're tested. In this part of the program, we're going to look at two common temperature indicators, their functions, their components, and how they work. The two most common temperature indicators on power transformers are the oil temperature indicator and the winding temperature indicator. The oil temperature indicator may also be known as the top oil temperature indicator the liquid temperature indicator, or the top liquid temperature indicator. The function of the oil temperature indicator is to indicate the temperature of the transformer insulating oil near the top of the transformer, where the oil is generally the hottest. The oil temperature indicator may also function as a switching device to operate transformer cooling fans, oil circulating pumps, and alarms when the oil reaches predetermined temperatures. A typical oil temperature indicator has a dial that's calibrated in degrees centigrade or Celsius. A white or yellow pointer indicates the oil temperature. When the oil temperature increases, the white pointer moves upscale, pushing a red pointer upscale with it. When the temperature decreases, the white pointer moves downscale. The red pointer remains at the highest temperature reached until it's reset. So the red pointer always indicates the highest temperature reached since it was last reset. The temperature sensing element is a bulb that contains either a helix wound bimetallic coil or fluid. This bulb is fluid filled. The fluid expands or contracts with changes in temperature. The bulb is mounted inside a thin walled liquid tight well. The well is mounted on the transformer and extends into the transformer oil. The bulb may be connected to the temperature indicator gauge through fluid-filled capillary tubing. The capillary tubing makes it possible for the temperature-sensitive bulb to be mounted near the top of the transformer, while allowing the gauge to be mounted at or near eye level, where it can be read easily. Some temperature-sensitive bulbs may be connected directly to the gauge without capillary tubing. These oil temperature indicators may be angled down for easier reading or they may be used on smaller transformers. Whether the bulb is connected to the gauge directly or through capillary tubing, a fluid-filled temperature-sensitive bulb is connected to a fluid-filled spiral tube, called a Bordon tube, inside the oil temperature gauge. When the temperature of the transformer oil increases, the heat transfers through the well to the temperature-sensitive bulb, and the fluid inside the bulb expands. This expansion is transmitted through the capillary tubing to the Bordon tube, which also expands and moves the white pointer. The white pointer pushes the red pointer upscale with it. Some oil temperature indicators include snap action switches for circuits to cooling fans, oil circulating pumps, and alarms. As the oil temperature increases, cams on the pointer shaft close each snap action switch at a specific preset temperature. When the oil temperature drops, the fluid in the temperature-sensitive bulb contracts, which causes the Bordon tube to contract and move the white pointer downscale. As the pointer moves downscale, the cams on the pointer shaft reopen each snap action switch near the preset temperature. The red pointer remains upscale to indicate the highest oil temperature reached. The red pointer may be reset using a reset button or using a knob in the center of the lens or on older units by moving a magnet across the gauge glass to draw the red pointer down to the position of the white pointer. Some temperature sensing elements, like this one, contain a bimetallic coil rather than fluid. The coil is directly attached to the pointer shaft. When the sensing element is heated, the bimetallic coil expands and rotates the pointer shaft to move the pointer upscale. The other common temperature indicator used on power transformers is the winding temperature indicator. The winding temperature indicator may also be known as the hot spot winding temperature indicator or the hottest spot winding temperature indicator. 
The function of the winding temperature indicator is to measure the equivalent or simulated hotspot temperature of the transformer windings. The winding temperature indicator may also function as a switching device to operate transformer cooling fans, oil pumps, and alarms. The winding temperature indicator is similar to the oil temperature indicator in many respects. Its dial is calibrated in degrees Celsius. A white pointer indicates the winding temperature. A red pointer indicates the highest temperature reached since the last time the red pointer was reset. The temperature sensing element is a bulb that contains either a helix wound bimetallic coil or fluid. This bulb is fluid filled. The temperature sensitive bulb is mounted inside a heating element, which is either a coil, like the sealed coil shown here, or a stainless steel well or some other resistive element. We'll look at the function of the heating element in a moment. Both the temperature sensitive bulb and the heating element are mounted in a thin walled liquid tight well that's mounted on the transformer and extends into the transformer oil. The function of the heating element can be explained using an illustration. The illustration includes a power transformer winding, a current transformer, a terminal block, a heating element, a temperature sensitive bulb, capillary tubing, and the winding temperature gauge. As shown here, the heating element is connected to the secondary of the current transformer. The current transformer surrounds part of the power transformer winding or winding lead. The power transformer winding and current transformer winding are separated in this illustration to more clearly show the operation of the heater circuit. The current transformer provides a current that's proportional to, but much lower than, the load current of the power transformer. The function of the current transformer and the heating element is to simulate the temperature rise created by the power transformer winding. The winding temperature is determined by the load on the winding, the thermal characteristics of the winding, and the temperature of the transformer oil. So the heat created by the heating element and the heat of the transformer oil both act on the temperature sensitive bulb. And the temperature measured by the winding temperature indicator represents the simulated winding temperature. Now in some cases, the current transformer and the heating element can't exactly duplicate the temperature rise at the transformer winding. So a calibrating resistor may be connected in parallel with the heating element to compensate for any difference or a current balancing auto transformer may be used in place of the calibrating resistor. The calibrating resistor may be mounted inside the power transformer tank or inside a termination block for the current transformer on the outside of the power transformer. If an auto transformer is used, it's typically located in the power transformer control cabinet. Both the oil temperature indicator and the winding temperature indicator are important tools for monitoring the performance of a power transformer. And when these indicators control fans, pumps, and alarms, they're critical to the safe operation and protection of the transformer and the entire power delivery system. To ensure that these indicators perform their functions properly, they're tested before a new transformer is put in service and at other times specified by company procedures. We'll look at temperature indicator testing in the next part of this program. For now, stop the tape and read the portion of your text on temperature indicators. Then answer the questions provided. Over time, a number of things can go wrong with power transformer temperature indicating systems. Lenses can break. Board on tubes and capillary tubing can develop leaks. Snap action switches can break. And calibrating resistors or current transformer circuits can open. Any of these kinds of problems can lead to false temperature indications. As a result, you may think that the transformer is operating at a safe temperature, when in fact it may not be. Or you may think that the system protection is functional, when in fact it may be disabled. So it's a good practice to test the operation of temperature indicators and their snap action switches at regularly scheduled intervals, according to your company's procedures. In this part of the program, 
We're going to look at how to test the calibration of oil and winding temperature indicators and how to check the snap action switches turn on and turn off temperatures. Here's a common instrument that's used for performing the tests. It has several basic features. One feature is a metal insertion tube. The temperature sensing bulb of an oil or winding temperature indicator is inserted into this tube for testing. Interchangeable insertion tubes with different sized openings may be provided for different sized sensing bulbs. Using the correct size tube is essential for accurate testing. The insertion tube fits into a heating well in the test instrument. As suggested by its name, the heating well provides heat to the insertion tube and to any sensing bulb inserted into the tube. A temperature set knob is used to select the amount of heat to be provided by the heating well. A Celsius Fahrenheit switch is provided to select whether that temperature is measured in degrees Celsius or in degrees Fahrenheit. A temperature display window shows the selected temperature or the measured temperature at the heating well. A set switch is used to determine whether the temperature that's displayed is the selected or measured temperature. When the set switch is in the set position, the display window shows the temperature that's selected using the temperature set knob. When the set switch is placed in the read position, the display window shows the actual temperature at the heater well. A test lead port is provided to accept test leads that may be used to check circuit continuity at the snap action switches in the temperature indicators. A test LED glows when the snap action switch contacts make a circuit. The LED goes out when the snap action switch contacts break the circuit. Finally, a power cord and an on-off switch provide AC power to the test set. This test set can be used to test the temperature calibration and the operation of snap action switches for both oil and winding temperature indicators. The procedure is fairly simple. Let's see how it's done. Before any work is done in a substation, the system dispatcher is notified. If the temperature indicators that are to be tested include snap action switches for alarms, the dispatcher must be prepared for the possibility of their operation. Some utilities have temperature indicator contacts connected with transformer trip relaying. In this case, the transformer trip circuit should be opened and tagged according to company procedures before testing begins. Some utilities go further and only test temperature indicators after the transformer has been taken out of service, usually for other maintenance and test procedures. To test the temperature indicator, the temperature sensing bulb is removed from the well in the power transformer. Since the well is liquid tight, the bulb can be removed from the well without losing transformer oil and without having to lower the oil level. The sensing bulb is placed into the insertion tube of the test instrument and the instrument is energized. The temperature indicator that's being tested is calibrated in degrees Celsius so the Celsius Fahrenheit switch is moved to the Celsius position. Then the set switch is moved to the set position and the temperature set knob is turned to select the required test temperature. Test temperatures are typically specified by company procedures or by the temperature indicator manufacturer's instructions. Here, the indicator will be tested at 80, 120, and 145 degrees Celsius. Once the test temperature is selected, the set switch is moved to the read position and the heating well temperature is allowed to increase to the selected temperature. After the heating well temperature stabilizes, the temperature gauge is given about five minutes to register the heat. It's also sometimes recommended to lightly tap the temperature indicator to ensure that the pointer has reached its full indication. Depending on the gauge manufacturer's instructions, the gauge should be accurate to within plus or minus two to five degrees. The snap action switch turn-on temperatures are checked when the test temperature is set above the turn-on temperature. For example, the first snap action switch in this gauge is set to turn on the fans at 70 degrees Celsius. So the snap action switch can be checked when the test temperature is set at 80. The snap action switch operation can be checked in a couple different ways. One way is to observe the device that the switch is to turn on 
and note the temperature when it starts. Another way is to use the test leads provided with the test instrument or to use a multimeter. The leads are connected across the proper pins for the switch contacts at the meter's control cable connector. When the snap action switch contacts make, the multimeter pointer will deflect, indicating circuit continuity. The other required test temperatures and snap action switch turn-on temperatures are checked with the same approach used for the first test and turn-on temperatures. After all the test temperatures and snap action switch turn-on temperatures are checked, the temperature knob is turned to zero and the heating well is allowed to cool. As the temperature drops, the snap action switch turn off temperatures are checked using the multimeter test leads across the control cable connector pins. The switches should open at about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius below their turn on temperatures. For example, the snap action switch that turn on at 70 degrees should turn off at about 65 to 60 degrees. If the temperature indicator doesn't register the correct temperatures within the acceptable range, or if the snap action switches don't operate at the proper temperatures, the temperature indicator may need to be recalibrated or replaced. Now there are other types of test instruments that may be used to check the calibration of temperature indicators. This type is fairly common. It's an oil bath test set. The instrument is filled with oil, which is then heated to a set temperature. A calibrated portable thermometer is inserted into the oil and the sensing bulb for the temperature indicator is also placed in the oil next to the portable thermometer. The temperature indicator is checked against the thermometer when the thermometer registers the required test temperatures. And the snap action switch operations are checked using a continuity device such as an ohm meter. The tests and checks that we saw in this part of the program determine whether or not the temperature gauge and the snap action switches are working properly. These tests can be used for both oil and winding temperature indicators. However, the tests do not check the operation of the heater circuits for a winding temperature indicator. We'll look at heater circuit testing in the next part of this program. But before continuing, stop the tape and read the part of your text on temperature indicator testing. Then answer the questions provided. The testing of a winding temperature indicator shouldn't be limited to testing just the temperature gauge and its snap action switches. If you do only this, you don't know if the winding temperature indicator is accurately indicating the simulated winding temperature. That's because the heating element is not taken into consideration in the test that we saw earlier. The heat that the heating element provides to the temperature sensing bulb represents the heating effect of the load on the power transformer windings. Without the heating element, the winding temperature indicator would simply be measuring oil temperature. To ensure that a winding temperature indicator accurately measures the simulated winding temperature, testing must include the heater circuit. In this part of the program, we'll look at how to test a heater circuit. This circuit will not contain calibrating resistors. We'll look at testing a heater circuit that does contain calibrating resistors later. The equipment needed to test a heater circuit includes a variable current source unit with an ammeter. This unit will be used to apply current to the heater circuit. The basic steps for testing the heater circuit can be briefly explained using the heater circuit illustration that we saw earlier in this program. In principle, to perform the test, a constant current must be applied to the heater circuit for about 30 minutes. The current transformer in the system is already applying current to the heater circuit, but the current varies with the load on the power transformer. So for the test, the current transformer will be removed from the circuit, and a current source unit will be connected to the heater circuit in its place. To safely remove the CT from the circuit, the current transformer leads must first be shorted together. Then one end of the CT is disconnected from the circuit, now the current source unit is connected to the heater circuit terminals. The current source unit is adjusted to apply a constant current to the heater circuit for a given period of time. And the winding temperature indicator is observed to determine the temperature change caused by the constant current. 
The heater circuit can be tested with the power transformer energized, although some utilities take the transformer out of service. If the power transformer remains energized, the CT will also be energized. And this brings up an important safety consideration, which is that the CT must be shorted before it's disconnected from the circuit. The reason is that opening an energized current transformer circuit results in a dangerous voltage across the open terminals. If the circuit arcs to your body, the current can cause severe and possibly fatal injuries. With that in mind, let's see how the basic heater circuit test steps are applied in the field. In this example, the heater circuit CT is shorted using a toggle switch in the power transformer control cabinet. Operating the switch shorts the current transformer leads and disconnects the CT from the heater circuit. Then the two heating element leads are disconnected from their terminals, also in the control cabinet, so that the current unit can be easily connected to them. The current source unit, with its ammeter, is connected to the heater circuit in series with the heating element. Then a constant AC current is applied to the heater circuit by the current source unit. The test current may vary depending on company or manufacturer instructions. A common test current is the current that the CT provides to the heater circuit when the power transformer is operating at its maximum rated volt amperes. The test current can be calculated by dividing the power transformer's full load single phase current by the current transformer ratio. But before this equation can be solved, the power transformer's full load single phase current must be determined. This is done by dividing the single phase volt ampere rating of the transformer by the equivalent single phase voltage. The single phase volt ampere rating can be determined from the three phase volt ampere rating on the transformer nameplate. In this example, the three phase volt ampere rating of the power transformer is 100 MVA. This is divided by three to get the single phase volt amperes, which is 33,333 kVA. This single phase kVA figure is entered into the formula. The equivalent single phase voltage is sometimes stated on the power transformer nameplate. If it isn't, it can be determined from the transformer's phase to phase voltage rating. In this example, the phase to phase voltage rating of the power transformer is 69,000 volts. This is divided by the square root of three to get the equivalent single phase voltage, which is about 39,838 volts. This equivalent single phase voltage is entered into the formula. 33,333 kVA divided by 39,838 volts calculates out to about 840 amps. This 840 amps represents the primary current at the current transformer when the power transformer is operated at full load. This figure can now be plugged into the formula for determining test current. The primary current is divided by the current transformer ratio. This determines how many amps are provided to the heater circuit by the CT when the power transformer is operating at its maximum rated volt amperes. The current transformer ratio in this example is 1,000 to 5, or 200 to 1. 840 amps divided by 200 is about 4.2 amps. The current transformer provides 4.2 amps to the winding temperature indicator heater circuit when the power transformer is operating at its maximum rated volt amperes. And 4.2 amps is the test current that will be provided by the current source unit to test the heater circuit. If the heater circuit contains a calibrating resistor, the test current will need to be a little higher. We'll see why later. The test current creates heat in the heating element that is sensed and measured by the winding temperature indicator. The test current is maintained until the winding temperature indication stabilizes, which can be anywhere from 25 minutes to an hour. Then the winding temperature indicator reading is recorded. Next, the oil temperature indicator reading is also noted and recorded. The oil temperature is subtracted from the winding temperature. 
This represents the gradient temperature, or the temperature rise over the oil temperature that was caused by the effect of the control test current on the heating element. This gradient temperature is evaluated using a heating element gradient curve provided by the power transformer manufacturer. In this simplified example, current in amps is charted along the horizontal axis, and the gradient temperature in degrees Celsius is charted along the vertical axis. To use the chart, first identify the test current on the horizontal axis that was applied to the heater circuit. In our example, the test current was 4.2 amps. From that point, draw a vertical line up to the gradient curve. Draw a horizontal line from that point to the vertical axis to determine the gradient temperature to expect with 4.2 amps test current. In this example, the gradient temperature should be 13 degrees Celsius. Since the temperature indicator is accurate to within plus or minus 2 to 5 degrees, the gradient temperature should be 13 degrees, plus or minus 2 to 5 degrees. Now, the heater circuit testing that we looked at was for a heater circuit that did not contain a calibrating resistor. If a resistor is present in the circuit, the test current will need to be adjusted to get accurate test results. We'll see why and how this is done in the next part of this program. But first, stop the tape and read the part of your text on heater circuit testing. Then answer the questions provided. If the heater circuit for a winding temperature indicator contains a calibrating resistor, it's necessary to calculate the current at the heating element in order to properly evaluate the test results. In this part of the program, we'll look at how to calculate the heating element current and how to evaluate the results of a heater circuit test when the circuit contains a resistor. We can go back to one of our earlier illustrations to see why the heating element current needs to be calculated when the circuit contains a calibrating resistor. When a calibrating resistor is included in a heater circuit, it's connected in parallel with the heating element. When test current is applied to the heater circuit, some of the current is diverted from the heating element by the parallel circuit containing the calibrating resistor. As a result, the element doesn't provide as much heat for the same current as a heater circuit without a resistor. For example, if a 4.2 amp test current is applied to the heater circuit, part of the current will flow through the heating element and part will flow through the resistor. To evaluate the test results, it's necessary to determine how much current is actually getting to the heating element. The heating element current can be calculated using this formula. IH is the current that reaches the heating element. This is the current that we're going to determine. ICT is the output current of the CT when the power transformer is operated at its maximum rated volt amperes. In our example, this is 4.2 amps which is also the test current that will be applied to the heater circuit. RC is the resistance of the calibrating resistor, which in this example is 0 .030 ohms. This value can be obtained from the power transformer manufacturer or the manufacturer's manual. RH is the resistance of the heating element, which in this example is 0 .008 ohms. This value can also be obtained from the manufacturer or the manufacturer's manual. The resistances divide out to 0.79. This is multiplied by 4.2 amps. The result is 3.32 amps. So from an applied test current of 4.2 amps, only 3.32 amps actually reaches the heating element. The heater circuit test is conducted as shown earlier, with the current source unit adjusted to apply the 4.2 amps test current to the heater circuit. When the heating element gradient curve is used to evaluate the test results, the calculated heating element current is used as the reference for the curve, not the applied test current. The calculated heating element current in our example was 3.32 amps. This is the actual current that reached the heating element, even though 4.2 amps was applied to the heater circuit. 
If the heater circuit test does not result in an acceptable gradient temperature, the resistance of the heating element and the calibrating resistor should be verified using an ohm meter or the ohm scale of a multimeter. To measure the resistance of the calibrating resistor, one end of the resistor is disconnected from the heater circuit. Then the multimeter probes are placed across the resistor lead and a ground terminal. Then with one end of the calibrating resistor still disconnected from the circuit, the multimeter probes are placed across the terminals for the heating element to verify its resistance. If the resistance of the heating element or the calibrating resistor is off, the component in error may need to be recalibrated or replaced. When all the testing is done, the heater circuit is restored to normal. The heater circuit testing that we looked at in this program applies to the heater circuits for the winding temperature indicators in most power transformers. But there are some variations that you should be aware of. For example, some heater circuits will have a current balancing auto transformer in place of a calibrating resistor. This illustration is a simple diagram showing a heater circuit with an auto transformer. The diagram includes the power transformer winding, the current transformer at the power transformer winding, an auto transformer, and the heating element. When you test this heater circuit, the test current will depend on where the current unit leads are connected. If the leads are connected between the CT and the auto transformer, the test current will be based on the output current of the current transformer. If the current unit leads are connected between the auto transformer and the heating element, then the test current will be based on the output current of the auto transformer. Regardless of the variations, the test described and demonstrated in this program help to ensure that the temperature indicators in your system provide accurate temperature indications. Accurate temperature indication is crucial because the temperature that a power transformer is operated at has an effect on the useful life of that transformer. Consistently high operating temperatures will significantly reduce the useful life of the transformer. Consistently low temperatures will extend its useful life. Accurate temperature indications are essential then to ensure that the power transformer is operated at temperatures that are safe and that will not shorten the life of the transformer.